Welcome to Ann Arbor Democracy, a place for conversation about how our local leaders are elected and how political decisions are made, what this looked like in the past, and what it looks like now. This project aims to explore the recent history and current reality of Ann Arbor Democracy. This is part two of an interview with Jerry DeGreek, who served on Ann Arbor City Council from 1972 to 1974 as a member of the Human Rights Party, or HRP. In 1972, two members of the Human Rights Party were elected to Ann Arbor City Council, Jerry DeGreek from Ward 1 and Nancy Wexler from Ward 2. In part one, Jerry described how he got involved in local Ann Arbor politics and the issues that motivated the HRP and other activist groups at the time. In part two, we talk more about the success of grassroots campaigns in 1972. Jerry explains what he and Nancy Wexler were able to accomplish as members of city council and how that work led them to both come out publicly as gay and lesbian. So a few minutes ago, you mentioned um, you're, you were thinking about who ran in 71, and you did have, there was a write-in candidate for mayor, Doug Cornell. That's right. And um, I remember him well. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, well, this is another question I had. So I was, I was reading about how you were successful in your elections in 72, and Doug Cornell was described as the coordinator of campaigns, Steve Nissen, um, the campaign manager. And so... Um, Part of my interest in talking to you is just what these elections looked like before, because what we are looking at currently in Ann Arbor is tens of thousands of dollars going to like professional managers. And this feels like what I'm reading about feels so much more grassroots than that. It was so. totally grassroots. Totally, <laughs> totally. I mean, I don't think anybody got a salary in, or, 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 or paid uh, to, <laughs> uh, to, to be campaign chair or coordinator. Um, but we allow, we, we relied on, um, on lots of different people basically doing canvassing, going door to door, talking to people. I know that uh, um, I did, and, I'm, and I know Nancy did as well, uh, went um, you know, door to door constantly for, a, for many, many weeks, reaching as many voters as we could. And I am, I am totally convinced that that's the only way we won is because we personally reached people. They, they, um, they saw that we were authentic, that we had policies that they could, that would make a difference in their lives in terms of, uh, both economic as well as cultural issues, so-called cultural I- I- issues. And so, um, so I, that, you know, that is how we won. Um, it, 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 it wasn't, with uh, fancy advertising or TV ads or anything like that. We had uh, flyers, and I think we also held some creative events, too, in, in, in terms of um, getting attention from the um, uh, population that we were trying to uh, reach as well. Uh, so that's how we won. It was this plain old political door-to-door uh, work uh, that I think um, still has a place today. Well, and I, so I, an article from that time period described that particular election as having a 45% turnout in April. Um, and we just came off of an election locally where we, there was a 24% turnout. Wow. Um, wow. That's, that's low. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. so I want, I want you to describe, I, I rather than me, the platform that you were able to collaborate with with others on council to make happen when you and Nancy were elected? Uh, sure. There were, there were a number of things we were able to, uh, to get through. Uh, one of them was the infamous $5 uh, fine, the, the uh, marijuana fine. We wanted to legalize, uh, you know, we thought the criminalization of drugs period was a, a bad policy and counterproductive uh, and didn't make any sense. And certainly marijuana was uh, something that should not be illegal, and we wanted to legalize it. Because of state law, we were not able to, to do that, um, but we were able to, to minimize the impact on, on people. So we worked in the, certainly the Rainbow People's Party, as well as all of the other two caucuses within HRP, very much you know, were in support of making this change. So we worked with the... Um, uh, Democrats who had, I think, previously um, done some work to make the penalty less. I can't remember exactly 
uh, what the penalty was when we were elected to to the to the city council, but it was certainly a lot more than a than a five dollars. But we were able to uh, to enact the um, five dollar uh, fine um, as the minimum um, or as the maximum penalty for anybody who. And not only that, that people would not be arrested, because prior to that, people actually were arrested for possession of marijuana. Uh, and in this way, they would just get a uh, ticket and a basically a, a five dollar fine. I remember when we passed this at the um, uh, city council, I actually dedicated my boat to my paternal grandfather, who was a um, a bootlegger during the during prohibition. True confessions. Um, when we voted on that, there were also a number of people. Um, from the Rainbow People's Party who were at the council, and I think they were actually uh, smoking joints, too. <laughs> and um, um, someone gave me a joint, and I refused to um, partake, only because, you know, one of the things that some of us were concerned about, including me, for better or worse, is that we didn't want to be labeled as the party that that is for marijuana only. That wasn't... We, we were for... Uh, for much more than that, it wasn't just about marijuana and, and the five dollar fine. And I think we had a concern that people would would uh, uh, think that that's all we we um, stood for. Uh, one thing I'm very proud of, um, moving away from the marijuana legislation, which 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 by the way got repealed, I believe, my second year on the uh, council. The first year when I was on council, there were four Democrats, including the uh, mayor, uh, there were five Republicans, and there were two Human Rights Party members, Nancy Wexler in the second ward and me in the um, uh, first ward. When we were elected, it was it was uh, hugely, um, it was a huge victory. Um, you know, as everybody knows, third party candidates rarely win in this country. And certainly that was true back 50 years ago. And the fact that, that we were able to win two councils seats was um, uh, pretty amazing. And, uh, and it felt really good, to be perfectly honest. Uh, <laughs> um, so, um, so you know, the, the other issue, which I, you know, think was really great that we were able to to make progress on is that we did pass uh, an ordinance that people could not be discriminated against on the basis of their sexual orientation or sexual preference. Uh, those were the terms we used in those days, along with sexual minorities. And we included uh, in the initial draft uh, a whole array of um, sexual minority folks, including transgender, transvestites, and and you know as well as lesbian, uh, gay, bi uh, folks. I, I can't remember what the final language was, but I know that in order to get it passed, uh, because of the uh, Democrats on the council, we had to narrow it somewhat. Unfortunately, but we still it was one of the first, if not the first, uh, civil rights acts in the uh, country that protected the rights of sexual minorities in housing, um, employment, and public accommodations. So, And we worked on that even before I came out. It wasn't like I was hiding my, um, my um, homosexuality. Well, in a way, I was to, the, to everybody in the world because I wasn't out because I had never had a homosexual experience or, or a relationship. Um, but, um, um, but we still advocated for, and I still very much was in favor, obviously, of, uh, of the rights for sexual minority uh, people. So we were able to uh, pass that, that ordinance in, uh, in 1972, which was great. Uh, if I can jump ahead a little bit, we, um, uh, we, that fall, I did finally have my first relationship as a gay man. Uh, and so in the fall, when there was an issue around um, uh, harassment of lesbians at a local bar, um, and that issue came before the uh, city council uh, in, I believe it was October, and I had actually started a relationship with a man in September of uh, 1973. So then the next time such an issue came up, and Nancy, in her own journey, which we had not talked about or planned, um, she, she too um, was a lesbian, and so we both came out at the same council meeting after, so here I was, 23 years old at the time, 
and um, had known I was different from the time I was about eight years old. Uh, and then suddenly, um, you know, announcing to the world, really, that I was um, uh, gay. So uh, because, because I could no longer talk about issues for sexual, sexual, sexual minority people without self-identifying that I was one of them. Uh, you know, just as I said a moment ago about um, the party not wanting to be typecast as the marijuana party, uh, there were uh, folks in the Human Rights Party who were a little bit concerned after Nancy and I both came out since their two elected council members turned out to be um, uh, gay and uh, lesbian, that somehow we would be, the entire party would be typecast as um, as 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 being a, a party around that that issue solely, which of course was not the um, the uh, case. Um, it is interesting. Some people at at the time uh, accused us of um, coming out as a political ploy uh, to get the uh, gay vote. Um, wow, <laughs> which is very funny. Well, plus we already had the support of many sexual, certainly the politically active sexual minorities uh, in, uh, in Ann Arbor because our platform was very clear and, and uh, pardon the expression, straightforward about the topic. And so we, um, um, we already had the, the, um, that, uh, that vote. So that was another issue that we were to make um, good progress on. Also, I think it was in 1973 or early 74, I think in 73, one of the, you know, I think our major accomplishments was, um, was around revenue sharing. At that time, the federal government had allocated money to local communities um, could, could use as they saw fit, within parameters, of course, but the, the parameters were, were pretty, um, pretty broad. And we were able to uh, put forward the Human Rights Party was able to to put forward a um, um, a package that put a lot of money into health and human services, like I think the Ann Arbor Free Clinic. I can't remember the names of the other organizations, but they all provide like child care and uh, health care and then so on. Um, and we were able to get the Democrats uh, to go along with that uh, that package. And, and passed that. So that was a um, major accomplishment as, as, as uh, well. Um, we didn't, as I think a lot of people know and have um, learned, is that we were not as successful on some fundamental economic changes, which we felt needed uh, to, to happen uh, so that the interest of working people and students and lower income people um, could, we could make a difference, like in terms of rent. Rent was exceptionally high in Ann Arbor, one of the highest rents uh, in the entire uh, country. Um, we had um, in Ann Arbor some of the highest rents uh, in, in the entire country. And um, so we, you know, worked on rent control, which was, uh, which was very, very challenging. And we, you know, actually put forward, the party, Human Rights Party put forward two different initiatives in which we collected signatures for, but there were major campaigns against uh, that uh, funded by landlords so that we could not enact um, rent control. You know, I'd like to step back, if I may, and then uh, just just say a word about how the party operated. So here we are, <clears throat> the two, two city council members on, on city council. We were not Lone Rangers. Uh, we were uh, we were instruments of the people who elected us and the people in the Human Rights Party. So it was uh, it was the Human Rights Party that made the decisions about the policies we would put forward and what we would um, how we would vote. <clears throat> so and, and and that was literally done in meetings. Anyone who came to party meetings would be able to um, to uh, vote and to um, to direct the policies of the party. Now, in practice, you know, the city council deals with, as everybody knows, a myriad of issues. You know, some of them were, were the issues that we cared about. We also did a lot of work around, you know, the anti-war movement and have the, having the city take a stand against the kind of um, um, imperialism um, and um, um, and racism that our country at times has promulgated, right? We brought those issues to the uh, floor as well. Um, and, and, and that was, you know, part of our, our uh, party's platform. Whether we could 
could defend it. Well, you know, the argument against that, of course, is that the city council has nothing to do with those issues. So why would you talk about, um, you know, the CIA and what's happening in, in South American countries that we were trying to influence and, 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 and certainly the war in Vietnam? But our idea, again, was not just about enacting policy, which was extremely important, but also about educating people about uh, bringing issues to the fore that we felt were important and using the party and, um, and our positions as a uh, platform. Now, in reality, as I was saying, the, the city council deals with a myriad of issues, as, as Elizabeth, you know very, very well. <laughs> um, and, 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 and so there were many issues which uh, I voted on, which Nancy and I voted on, uh, which you know were not explicitly directed by by the party, but they were, you could take from our platform and, and uh, know what, what made sense. Certainly the major policy initiatives of the Human Rights Party were, um, were prescribed by our platform, consistent with our platform, as well as with, with what the membership of the uh, party wanted. And we extrapolated in terms of the myriad of other issues of how we would vote. You know, one of the things that I uh, felt very strongly personally being on the uh, city council was I knew I, I knew we were pretty far out there, radical in those days, 50 years ago. And I kind of knew intuitively that in order to get people to pay attention to, to some of our more radical ideas and our, what we were trying to bring, uh, the issues we were trying to bring forward, it was so important to also pay attention to all the mundane issues that, that the city residents care about, whether it be planning or potholes or, 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 or what have you. So um, um, actually the first year that I was on the council, I was fortunate enough to be on the uh, city's planning commission as the city council representative. And, you know, there I dealt with a whole and learned a whole lot about planning issues and and how uh, big business interests uh, can really dictate what happens in terms of growth in the uh, city. And uh, so I really appreciated my and an opportunity uh, to be on the uh, planning commission. Though the second year, um, I got kicked off when the Republican mayor came in. The Republicans had a, a majority, so I was no longer on the uh, on the uh, planning commission. But I think my you know point is in terms of how the party operated, is that we did have a platform that we were committed to. We did have a membership and uh, an openness that really was what uh, dictated and prescribed what the policies were that we were going to. Um, to uh, that Nancy and I were, were, were going to bring forward to the council. But again, there were many issues uh, because the city deals with uh, so much that we, that Nancy and I <clears throat> were kind of on our own uh, to make sure that we, but we, we voted and advocated uh, based on the platform and the ideas and so that we could extrapolate and, uh, and, and, and deal with all of those issues that city residents are rightfully concerned about. Well, and I, you know, in reading articles from the time, it, it that that theme is really clear. It, the idea, this commitment to community. I think the phrase is like community control. I community read control. In, that's right. Community control right. and this this idea that the ba- that the best kind of democracy is going to be more inclusive and it's not going to be dictated by profit interests. Right. Um, right. I mean, I, I, one of the things that's remarkable, digging, jumping down this rabbit hole of the Human Rights Party, is how many issues I recognize that are still so relevant today. You were working on um, police oversight. Thank you for raising that, because that is something I did want to uh, talk about too. Because um, we, you know, we did um, want to bring to light the role of police, uh, which was which was was not always. Um, Account was certainly not accountable to the people, and 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 certainly at odds with certain segments of the population, including racial minorities, as well as um, as you know sexual minorities. Uh, there was definitely harassment on the part of police, um, in terms of in some cases demonstrators, uh, um, uh, uh, c- certainly gay gay and lesbian people and black people, uh, and so we wanted to bring at any time. Those issues came to fore. We, you know, we we wanted to make sure 
that we highlighted them to educate folks about the role of police. Now, don't get me wrong. Even in those days, there were you know many police who were who were good cops, so to speak. But overall, uh, they did not necessarily um, the uh, police force did not necessarily um, uh, protect the interests of certain groups of people and actually work uh, worked opposed to them. In part three, we talk more about the anti-discrimination ordinance, the changes that happened while Jerry was on city council, and his thoughts about what threatens democracy now. Like and subscribe if you'd like to be alerted to more content like this.